Hey sis, welcome back. It's your girl Miss Tony. I am back to work. So I had a wonderful maternity leave. If you guys are following me, you know that I got an entire eight months off, which was fabulous. Just being able to have that headspace and that time to really bond with baby Karis and just spend time at home with my other two girls as well and just nurturing that relationship with all of them. Um, it's been tremendous and I'm very grateful. But what does that mean if you're breastfeeding? What are you supposed to do when you're used to feeding that baby every three or so hours and now you're apart from the baby for several hours of your day? Well, there's a few options. You can go to formula, you know, the Infamils of the world, the Similax, the Gerbers. There's definitely options out there. Now, baby Karis is now seven and a half months old. And so she's at the point where she's eating baby food every day. So that's satiating her, filling her up every day in addition to the milk, which we're slowly starting to decrease the amount of milk she's having per day so that she can have more and more food. But what if you're like me and you were breastfeeding the entire time, you weren't formula feeding and you don't prefer to go to formula feeding? Well, you can create a system. I've been working on this pumping system ever since Karis was born. And so I had a great overflow with her. About 1400 ounces that I've been able to store and freeze and save in preparation for this moment right here. So what does that entail? Well, it's a process. I'm at the point now where I am no longer nursing the baby directly on the boob. I'm actually exclusively pumping. So what does that mean? I'm literally pumping about four times a day and that's all I'm doing as far as expressing breast milk. It's a wonderful thing that God gave us this ability to be able to produce this milk for them that nourishes them and gives them life, but I'm over it. <laughs> I've done this for three babies and I'm like, okay, we got to make this convenient because I'm going back to work. You guys know I'm in school as well. And so, you know, how can I make this work for our household? So I pump four times a day and now my pumps are a lot longer than they were when I was just pumping to empty my boobs. So why do people pump in the first place? One, because maybe they just don't have a, a sufficient supply and they're not able to express that milk sufficiently when they're breastfeeding the baby. The baby could have a tongue tie or some other reason. But I will say this disclaimer that pumping typically for most women is not more efficient than breastfeeding. Breastfeeding the baby able to empty your breasts naturally and with a pump, it's never going to be 100% able to empty it. It's just not because it's a replicated machine that's not the same. But the machines they have on the market nowadays, all of the pumps with the double motors, like these are some really high grade, hospital grade available in the market now. And so they do work pretty efficiently. If she fed on both, but she didn't really empty both because I can feel that there's still milk in there, then I pump just after every feeding anyway just to make sure that I am empty. If you guys are watching you know that I have been prone to mastitis and so that's another thing is you want to prevent engorgement. So if you feel like the baby is feeding well but they're not emptying one of one or both of your breasts then you want to make sure you're emptying them so that you don't get engorged, you don't get clogs because it can turn into mastitis. Watch my video on mastitis if you have any questions or want to know how to either prevent or treat mastitis. I happen to be a pro on it. So, as I mentioned, I'm pumping instead of about 20 minutes long, it's honestly, it's taking me about 40 minutes to pump now. Again, it's just four times a day and I kind of spread it out where now I'm trying to make sure that overnight I'm able to sleep at least seven hours. And so that means during the day, I have to pump a little bit more frequently when I'm awake. So what does my schedule look like? I pump first thing in the morning. So around 8.30, 9 o'clock, uh, is when I do my first pump. No, I'm not an early bird. So first thing in the morning is not 6 a.m. to me or 7 a.m. <laughs> or 8 a.m. <laughs> my first thing in the morning, 8 o'clock. That's what I'm pumping the first time. And again, yes, it's taking probably, I'll say 45 minutes for that first pump because I have just gone overnight for so long and there's so much milk in there. Um, I want to make sure I get it all out. And so even if I can see that I'm pumping and there's not really any drip left afterwards, I'll keep going just a little bit longer until I get to about 45 minutes, um, maybe sometimes even 50 minutes. I know that sounds crazy and long to a lot of you who pump in like 15 minutes, but I do this um, to make sure that I'm empty and again, to prevent engorgement. So then through the course of the day, instead of going that long stretch, I'm going maybe four and a half hours 
um, until my next pump. Because I have that longer pump and I'm so full, I do get a nice amount of milk during that time frame. So um, I did mention to you guys at the six, six and a half month mark, my milk supply did start to dwindle a little bit. It stayed pretty consistent over the past like two months um, where it's lower than it was when Karis was first born, but it's been the same for the last couple months. And so I'm pumping about 28 to 30, 32 ounces a day instead of like 40 what I was doing before. So the first thing in the morning, I'm probably getting around eight ounces now. I was getting about 10 at, until about six months. Now I'm getting about eight ounces and she gobbles that up pretty quickly. And so, um, the milk that I will talk about later as far as what I stash, that will go to use like later in the morning. Then I'll pump again around two o'clock because usually during my lunch break at work, I'm either doing homework for school or oftentimes I'm actually at lunch with clients or I'm doing some type of event um, for, for work um, during the lunch hour. And so um, with my last job, I was a lot more free during the lunch hour and I would wake up earlier so I could pump earlier and then pump on my lunch hour. Um, now I'm pumping closer to two o'clock, which is when my day kind of calms down a little bit and I get a little break. Um, so yeah, anywhere around like two, two thirty is typically when I do my second pump. With that pump, I'll usually get about six ounces. And then depending on my evening, so if I'm in class, then I have to go a little bit longer. I have class this semester, three evenings a week. So oftentimes that next pump isn't until eight and nine o'clock uh, when I get home. And then the last pump is somewhere in the middle of the night whenever I can wake up. <laughs> so I'll typically wake up if I can between 1 a.m. and like 3 a.m. Um, I was doing an alarm and that was driving me crazy. And so my body, believe it or not, my body is my alarm. Like my boobs will be like, okay, it's time. <laughs> And so I'll just wake up like, oh, I, you know, if I start to feel full or a little tingling, thankfully I don't leak. Some women, ha when they have so much milk stored up and they've waited too long, they start to leak. I don't leak. Again, my milk is actually really thick. And so instead of leaking, I just start to get that little full feeling and that little tingly feeling. And so I'll just wake up and pump. If it's the 1 a.m. time frame, then again, that means I'm going all the way until about 8 o'clock not pumping. And so that's when I start all over again. And that's why I have a little bit more milk during that pump. So what do I do next? So I pump obviously into bottles. She'll eat maybe six ounces during a feed. And so when I have extra, I just store it in the refrigerator. I bought this little Mandela storage unit you don't have to have it it's it's so extra but i just like having it because it separates everything else in my fridge from the baby stuff <laughs> and so this can fit probably about five bottles in here i like to put the first one in and then as more accumulate then i can just push them around so that we know the one in the front is always the one that needs to be used first so it's first in first out and after it's refrigerated you only want to have it refrigerated for like a day or two um, you don't want it to go bad. And so typically I like to stick with the rule of thumb of just 24 hours. Um, so usually I'm refrigerating first thing in the morning. So that means the next morning I'm coming in and I'm getting that first bottle out. And if we didn't use it during the day, which sometimes because I'm at school in the evenings, Kelvin will use it at night. Um, but if it's still there, then I'll go ahead and go to the next step of the process. The next step is freezing. I bought these little milky containers and I loved it. So I used it all through the process of um, storing breast milk when I had Cameron and then I just bought some new ones when I had Kara. So I've got about four of these that I use because I have so much milk um, and you can see they're like ice cubes and so you just pour just out of your regular bottle into each one and there's 10 in here and each one is an ounce and so once you have it all full you don't want to fill it all the way up because breast milk expands when it's frozen. So a lot of times people get a little worried about how much are they really going to get a whole ounce if they're using these and you do. So you still need to leave some space though. So make sure that when you're filling up each of these, you're not filling it all the way up to the top. It shouldn't be flush against the top. Why? Because you'll make a big mess. Once you put it in and the milk starts to expand and it's not frozen yet, then the liquid will pour out and you'll have it all over your freezer. I've done it dozens of times, too many times to count. So don't be like me. <laughs> Make sure you give yourself a little bit of space in there. I say fill it up maybe 90% of the way, leave a little bit of space on top of each one and allow it to have that room to expand while it's frozen. I love these little things, my little milkies. So what do they look like when they're frozen? As I mentioned, they're little cubes. 
I don't want to take it out, make sure it's um, nice and aseptic. Um, but they look like little ice cubes. And this bag just holds 10. So I just buy these little gallon bags. It's the Power Shield technology ones uh, from Ziploc that you can use in the freezer. So I like to use those because the bag itself is coated a little bit safer than a traditional plastic bag. And that's it. I freeze mine like this. After I freeze for a couple days in this, then I transfer from here and you literally break it up like ice cubes. And then I just put them directly into the bag, make sure it's locked all the way. I love these tops where you know for sure because the color changes and you know it's for sure secure. And that's it. I put these in my refrigerator first in my kitchen. Um, I have a drawer that pulls out in, the, in my freezer that keeps it separate from all of our food. And so I keep maybe 10 bags in there just so we have that in the short term. And once maybe a week has passed, then I go ahead and transfer these into my deep freezer. So here's a quick snip at what my deep freezer looks like. It's in my garage and I have accumulated months and months of breast milk at this point. And so um, it's pretty full and you actually can't tell, but there are rows and rows beneath <laughs> what you can see here. Um, so all the way down to the bottom of the deep freezer, it's full of these bags of milk. And um, one thing I want to mention is um, it's important to make sure you write the date on them. You wanna make sure you buy the ones that have a little space where you can write the date with a permanent marker. Um, that's important because you wanna, as I mentioned, first in, first out is the, best, is the best method, whether you're refrigerating or freezing. So once you have it in your deep freezer, you wanna be able to stack them by the later dates first so that when it's time for you to start using it, which the CDC recommends six to 12 months of freezing breast milk in a deep freezer, I like to go on the six month side so that it's not too old, but you can go up to 12 months if you're using a deep freezer with breast milk. But you wanna make sure you're using the oldest milk first and then using the, the milk that's more recent later so that you can get each milk to the six to 12 month mark. So the last part of the process is defrosting or thawing your breast milk. So typically what we are starting to do now that I'm back to work is my nanny will come and in the morning she'll take out a bag of breast milk from the freezer and typically I'll have a bag already in the refrigerator. And so you have 24 hours once you are thawing out your breast milk like this. So now this has another purpose. Instead of using it for the bottles for the liquid, I'm actually using it for the bags of the frozen. We have a little system now where we just put the one that's frozen on one side, the one that's already um, thawed on the other side. And during the day, we'll even take the one out and put it on the countertop so it can defrost naturally. It's just the best way. I have one of those baby brezzas where you just put the milk in and it'll melt it or it'll warm the milk for you. Um, those are cool, especially if you need it in a cinch. But if you have time um, and you can plan accordingly, then I would just put it out and let it naturally thaw out on the countertop. And you can do that for a, a few hours actually until it's completely thawed. Um, again, you can still refrigerate it at that point or you can just use it at that point. Babies are okay when it's a little bit cool. They don't often like really cold milk, but they can take it typically if it's a little bit cool. And the bag that we use at night, we actually put it in a cooler in our room just in case the baby wakes up in the middle of the night and wants some additional milk. So we make sure we have some available um, by the bedside as well because we're lazy and we don't want to get up and go all the way downstairs and like try to work on a bag of milk at four o'clock in the morning. I mean, who wants to do that? Karis was sleeping through the night when she was six weeks old, all the way up until she was six months old. And then all of a sudden she started waking up. <laughs> so she's hungry and that's why we're feeding her more throughout the day to try to make sure that she sleeps a little bit longer at night. But I will say for the past two months, she's been waking up pretty consistently um, in the middle of the night. And she wakes up with like her eyes closed. So she's not awake awake, but she's like telling us, hey y'all, I'm hungry, hook a girl up so I can really go back to dreamland. Like, <laughs> so we already have the frozen milk that had been defrosting for a few hours overnight, right by the bedside, especially if it's one of those nights where I didn't wake up until three o'clock to, to pump. Sometimes I'm up pumping and she wakes up cause she maybe may hear me and she wants the milk and like, you know, we don't want her to have to wait for the milk to be pumped. And then again, we don't want to have to go downstairs and like warm up breast milk. And so we just have that milk that we keep by our bedside, which I'll say out of a week, 
she probably will drink that milk four or five times in the middle of the night. The other nights she may not wake up um, or I may just have some, some fresh breast milk ready for her. So make sure you use that breast milk within two hours. Um, you have a couple other methods. So if you're not lazy like us and you do get up in the middle of the night to warm it, you can use some warmer or you can just use some warm water, not hot water, but some warm water and just dip the milk in. That actually works pretty quickly or just some running water in your sink while it's flowing lukewarm water just let it run over the bag and it'll warm up cdc actually recommends not using a microwave because it doesn't necessarily evenly distribute the warmth throughout the whole bag so you could have some hot hot parts of the milk and then some cold parts and that's all bad for the baby that's so. the other part i wanted to share so once i defrost it and let it thaw in the bag you guys probably saw in my day in the life video i then pour it from the bag into the bottle. You should probably be using a funnel or something to, to do that transition, but I've been doing this for so long that I got it down to a T where I can pour it without missing the opening of the bottle. But for you, if you're trying it out for the first time, just use a funnel. Make sure you sterilize it when you first buy it. And that's it for exclusively pumping as well as freezing breast milk and my whole system of how to feed your baby and continue your baby on breast milk even when you go back to work or maybe the baby was born prematurely or has some GI issues, whatever the case may be, and you find yourself in a position where you're having to pump as well, I got you, girl. And it doesn't have to be just women. I've had husbands and significant others reach out to me as well with questions. So I would love to help any way that I can. Exclusively pumping has become sort of a new option because of all the hospital grade pumps that are available on the market now and just the lifestyle that people have. There's not a ton of research out there. There's not a ton of information out there, but I've experienced it and I've exclusively pumped three times now. Thanks for watching. I hope this was insightful. I'll see you next time.